When you're preparing your home for sale, you usually look at the staging of the inside of the house. But what about outdoors? The great outdoors. It's The Real Estate Show. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. My name's Rick Naples. I'm the owner broker of Zone Realty LLC. You zone your home. The great outdoors. As I open the show, everyone is thinking about outdoor projects. The warm weather, of course, is here. And when it comes to putting your home on the market, the outdoor look of the home is just as important as the indoor look. We talk a lot in my business about staging and different things you can do to try to make your home appeal to the widest range of buyers. So on this show, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things you can do outdoors. And a little later on, I'll even give you some quick tips that are easy and inexpensive to do. But let's talk about the yard. First of all, the biggest thing that you see in any yard, of course, is your lawn. Now, it's really important that the lawn looks its best. A lot of folks go out in the early spring or sometimes in the late fall, depending on the area you're in, and they fertilize the lawn so that they can get a nice, lush, green-looking lawn come the time when it starts to grow. It's really important that you want to make the front lawn of the home look its possible best. If there's any dry spots or dead patches or anything like that in the front yard, you want to fix those because a buyer is going to zero right into those spots. You also want to make sure when you mow the lawn that you want to mow it a little bit more often than you normally might when your house is on the market. And what I mean by that is you want to keep the grass nice and trim at all times. Many buyers nowadays will search on the internet and they'll look at the pictures of homes and those homes that they look at that look really nice may spark their interest to maybe want to go see. The next step is a lot of them will do what's called drive-bys. This is when they drive into the neighborhood and they drive down your street and they take a look at the house that's for sale and they decide whether or not that's the area or the home they want to go the next step and take a look at. So if you have a lawn and the lawn is all dried out and it's got big bare spots in it and it looks terrible, that's going to give the impression that the home might be terrible inside. Another thing you want to pay attention to that's kind of my pet peeves is garbage cans. You know, when we live in a house, uh, we have those garbage cans here in our area that you roll out front, one for recycling and one for your normal trash. Uh, those are big cans, and a lot of folks tend to put those cans right out in the driveway or in front or near the garage door. Not a great impression, folks, when someone's driving by your home for sale and they see the garbage cans in the driveway. So I usually recommend to my sellers that you take those garbage cans and you hide them around the side of the house or even bring, bring them around the back of the garage and get them out of sight because you don't want people focusing in looking at the garbage cans. Stand out in your front yard. Stand out at the street. Go across the street and look at your house from across the street. How does it present itself? I talk a lot here on The Real Estate Show about something that's called curb appeal. This is the way that the house presents itself to its surroundings, to the neighborhood. So we talked about lawns and we talked about hiding the garbage cans. But how does the house itself look? Are the gutters in good shape? Or do they have trees growing out of them because you haven't cleaned them in a while? What about the front door of the house? Is that clean and presentable? When you're standing across the street and you're looking at the front of your house, can you see the number on the house? You know, that's really important because with today's 911 system, even though there's GPS out there, it helps when you can find the number of the house, especially if you're one of those sellers that put your house on the market and you don't want the realtor's sign out in the front yard. 
you want people to be able to find the correct house that's up for sale and see those numbers. If your house is set way back from the road, perhaps maybe you want to put a number on the side of the mailbox if that's towards the street. Or what I've seen a lot of folks do is they'll put an ornamental rock or something like that at the end of the driveway with the number of the house painted on it. So it makes it easy to identify that that's the right address. Take a look at your windows. Take a look at your roof. Take a look especially at the garage door. I can't tell you how many times we've driven up to houses when I'm showing buyers homes. And the yard is beautiful and the house looks nice, but the garage door is all beat up. You know, bottom of the door is all rotted out. Or the door hasn't been painted in a number of years or it's sitting sideways or whatever. Just detracts from the overlook of the whole house. When you're approaching the home and you're looking at the lawn and the ornamental bushes that are in the front, one of the other tips we give in staging the home is to add some color. It's real easy to go out, get some colorful flowers, and strategically plant those in the front yard so that you can have a pop of color, something that's going to be very attractive to the eye. And the other thing also, too, is to look at your driveway. You know, if the driveway's in really rough shape, it's pitted, it's cracked, it's got holes in it. That's going to deter buyers because they're going to think that's a major expense. So take a look at the driveway. You might not be in a position where you can have the driveway repaved, but you might be able to at least make sure the driveway is clean and that it looks presentable in one way or shape or even patch those holes. Let's take a look at this little presentation I put together that just talks about some of the things that you can do when you're looking at the outdoors of your home. I'm talking here this morning on The Real Estate Show about staging the outside of your home, which is just as important as staging the inside of a home when you're putting it on the market. What are some of the inexpensive things that you can do to make your home a little bit more appealing, especially for those folks that are driving by, or make it appealing when folks do what's called a walk around, and that's when they walk around the yard. I talked earlier about mowing the grass. One of the tricks that I learned actually from a landscaper that I can share with you that I thought was kind of neat was to cut your lawn on a diagonal to the house. In other words, instead of going straight up and down or straight sideways back and forth, 
Use a little flair when you're cutting a lawn. By cutting the lawn on a diagonal to the house, it actually makes the front yard look larger and it actually gives the house, for some reason, a little more psychological appeal when you're looking at the yard. So try it. You may like the way that looks. I mentioned about putting flowers out in the front. You want to put flowers that are very colorful, but they're not going to grow where they're going to overwhelm the walkways. A little spot of color here and there is great. And also pay attention to the front walkway or the way that you lead up to the front door. If there's any broken pavers or anything cracked as far as cement is concerned, you want to address that because those are situations that, again, the buyer always focuses on the flaws, not necessarily the positives when they're looking at a house because they're trying to make a dis buying decision on one of the biggest purchases they're going to make in their lifetime. So pay attention to those little details. I put together this presentation it talks about the front door of the house. And I used it a little while back and got a lot of positive comments on it. So I wanted to show it again here on The Real Estate Show. What does your front door say about you? I promised at the beginning of the show that I was going to share some inexpensive and easy tips that you can do to make the outside of the house just as appealing as the inside of the house. And I put together a tips list, but before I get to that particular presentation, let me talk about a couple of them. I learned a long time ago from a professional photographer that was in the business of taking pictures of homes to help them sell about some of the tricks that you can do outside of the home in order to make the home look better in photographs. And I wanted to take that one step further. It actually looks better when somebody's approaching the house. And that's a simple tool that we all have available and it's called water. Now, how do you use water to make the outside of your home look better? Well, if you have a garden hose and you can hook it up to the faucet outside, when you know that someone's going to come to look at the house, about a half an hour to 45 minutes or so before they're coming to look at the house, of course, if the weather permits, they tell you to wet down everything. Put a little water on the front lawn, wash off the front walkway, the front entranceway, rinse down the driveway, uh, even wet the plants and the flowers and the flower beds and so on and so forth that are in the front of the house. This does two things for you. Number one, it obviously makes the plants happy because they're getting watered and the driveway clean because you're rinsing it off. But number two, water cuts down sun glare. So if you're in a very sunny spot and it's a very sunny day, if you take a few moments to quickly rinse down everything, it cuts down that reflective glare and it makes the buyer have a better perception of when they're looking at the home. They can take in the whole view and they're not squinting because of the sunlight that's out there. Let's talk about patios. A lot of us have patios in our backyards, or maybe we have a deck in the backyard. And when the house goes up for sale, you start 
packing things away because you're going to move. One of the big mistakes that sellers will make is if they have a deck that's nicely pointed with patio furniture or a grill or something along those lines, they take all that stuff off and they leave the deck empty or the patio empty. Well, don't do that. Leave some strategic pieces of furniture out so you can show a buyer how that area outdoors can be used. Now, sometimes people use their patios and their decks as just a place to store their extra junk. Well, don't do that when your house is up for sale. You want to make sure that you can show that. Take the time with the patio to fix any broken pavers or bricks or fence around it or whatever that might be so it looks nice. Clean it. Weed if you need to weed. You know, you got those weeds coming up between the bricks. You want to clean all that stuff out. If you have a deck, doesn't cost most folks to put a fresh coat of paint on the deck if it's, that's what you do. Or if you have an all wood deck that's not painted and it's a little bit faded, you can go out and get a bucket of deck restore and wash the deck down and clean it up and make it look really nice so it's nice and presentable. Again, you want outside features to be just as attractive as inside features. Let's watch this quick presentation that I put together that talks about some of the inexpensive tips you can do when looking at the outside of your home when it's for sale. One of the other things that I want to mention when you're looking at the outside of the house and trying to make it appeal to buyers is a lot of us uh, that are involved in certain things or, you know, certain activities, especially those of us that have kids, um, make our yards appealing to the children. So I don't know how many of you have seen houses you've driven by and you see the basketball hoop. Um, sometimes they're the older ones that are actually attached over the garage doors or maybe it's a separate one, you know, one of those weighted ones that can be moved around the yard. Um, and the kids use it for shooting hoops. I mean, I used to do that as a kid a lot. It's fun. When the house goes up for sale, that can be a pro or it can be a con. You want to take a look at how that's set up. And does it look like that can be detrimental to parking in the driveway? Um, or is it something that because of the kids' activity or even your activity of being out there, things are a little bit more scuffed up than they normally might be? So you want to address those items. So pay attention to that. Uh, I have friends of mine, their kids are into hockey. Um, so they'll do, um, you know, they'll practice a lot. Uh, as far as using roller skates in the yard instead of ice skates, you know, with goals. Uh, kids that play soccer, you know, they put out the soccer goalies and things like that in the yard. 
you want to take a look at all that kind of stuff as to how that's affecting the look of the yard and fix anything that might be damaged just because of normal play. Pay attention to swing sets. Um, some of us have really fancy swing sets, you know, with the jungle gyms and, and uh, you know, rope climbs and slides and tree houses and all this kind of stuff. Well, again, if you have that in the particular backyard, make sure it's in good shape. You want it to be appealing. Uh, you don't want it to look like it's run down or falling apart. This is the part of the real estate show I call the real estate mailbag. It's my opportunity to address questions that are sent to me here at the real estate show or sometimes just share conversations I've had when I'm out and about in the general public or even when I'm talking to fellow realtors. You know, at this time of year, as I said earlier in the show, everybody's attention is to the outside. The weather is beautiful and people are thinking of the beach they're thinking of vacation time, but they're also thinking about yard work. Now's the time, especially in the early springtime, to start cleaning up the yard from all that winter debris that was left behind from the winter time. Now's the time to start looking at plantings that you're going to do. One of my favorite things came to me in an email, and the person was asking, what is a really cheap and quick way that I can make the yard look clean and neat. And one of my secrets when I was taking care of a lot of the yards on the homes that I used was mulch. I love mulch, folks. Mulch is inexpensive. You can get it in a number of different colors. I used to happen to like the red cedar because I like the smell of it. It hides flaws in the ground. It makes your flower beds pop because it draws attention to the plantings rather than the, to the dirt that's behind it. It also looks great around the base of trees if you trim off the base of a tree with some mulch. It's a great way and a simple way to kind of just clean up things and make the yard look great. And as the email had stated to me, the person that was writing talked about it only took $100 or so of mulch and their yard looked much, much better. And they felt it actually brought them more money when they sold the house. So there's an idea. Use some mulch. My name is Rick Naples. This is The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. Go on outside and enjoy the weather. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.